Hello, my name is Jonathan Perry, and I am the managing attorney of the High Country Office of Legal Aid. Uh, we serve the area surrounding Boone, North Carolina. And one of the areas that we are practicing in is domestic violence. And so today, I, I just very briefly want to talk about safety planning during the time of COVID-19. It seems like the government, uh, the state government, uh, your employers are telling you to stay at home. Unfortunately, what we are seeing is that one of the most unsafe places that you can be at times when you have an abusive person in the household is at home. So there is a way for you to be protected still because the courthouses are still operating in regards to domestic violence. You can get a restraining order. Restraining order is a way for a person that's being abused for the state to step in and enter an order to protect them, to, to say that the abuser can no longer come around you or maybe certain other individuals. Within the domestic violence order, there's a way to get potentially the home you're living at, a car, or potentially temporary custody. So to get a restraining order, you have to meet the level of uh, proving domestic violence. And a lot of people think, well, that maybe that's just, you know, getting slapped. No, it's, it's much broader than that. It could be a physical touching where somebody's either causing you or attempting to cause you bodily injury. It could be a sexual act uh, against your will on you, it, or it could be where you're in fear of serious bodily injury or continued harassment and you have distress because of that. Some of the things that we are seeing uh, abusers do in this time is using the virus against you to cause you terror. That could be withholding medical cards. It could be withholding hand sanitizer. It could be withholding disinfectant. It could be they're leaving and then telling you they're infected and they're, you're, now you're exposed. That is an example of sort of how the harassment's being used now. So if you are in a relationship or a situation where you believe that you're being abused, it's really important to develop a safety plan. And it would be, I would really love to sit here and say, hey, you need to do X, Y, and Z, but a safety plan, only you can come up with that with guidance from others working with you because your facts are particular to you. What the person that is abusing you is doing may be very unique. And so these are meant to be just some things to cause you, and, the, and you may be watching this today and it may not be applicable. You may not have a friend that you want to forward it to, or you may be going through this yourself. But when you come up with a safety plan, it needs to be tailored to your situation. One thing that I would encourage you to do, if you have the ability to call, if your DV shelter may be closed down because of COVID-19. You can still just Google a domestic violence hotline and call that, and they can certainly help you with the safety planning process. Make sure as you're coming up with a plan to pay attention to your abuser's schedule. Does, do they work? Are they leaving the house at a certain time? Are they going out drinking at a certain time uh, at, a, for, at a buddy's house or something of the like? Make sure you know their schedule and that you know when they're going to be there or not going to be there. The other thing that I would really encourage you to do is to have a buddy, a friend, somebody that you are checking that you can check in on it on a daily basis. It may not be somebody you call to simply tell about the incidents of DV, although it, it should be that, but it's somebody that's not gonna arouse suspicion that you can speak with every day that knows what's going on in your life and knows what you're, you're, you're dealing with. And with that, I would strongly consider having a code word with uh, your friend that you're communicating with. It could be a phrase from a movie that's not, it's something that you can maybe text. A lot of times when we see people, abusers that are charged with assault, a lot of times they're abused with interfering with the 911 call as well, because that's what abusers do. Abusers at the end of the day want to control you. They want to keep you from something and keep you tethered to them. So a lot of times we'll see it where they won't let you call 911 and, and a situation may arise where you need to. So you may want to have a code word that you send to your friend that that is the code. They need to call 911 because the sheriff's deputies or law enforcement need to come to the house. Um, as you can, I would encourage you to prep a, go, a to go bag. I, I'm not a, 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 talking about a suitcase next to the door. I'm talking about if you need to get out quickly because your abuser, your life is threatened or you're in danger, you can get out. 
That could be maybe having a box in the kitchen or pantry with a cleaning supplies, masks, uh, disinfectant that you can grab. Maybe having a box in your closet when you have all of the uh, medical records or medical documents or insurance cards and different documents you need to get and go. Maybe having your kids clothes like a bag with your kids clothes that you can just grab in a hurry and get out of, and get, and get out of the house. Um, as far as practical matters, when you have an abusive person in the house, you want to typically avoid wearing anything that they can grab around your neck, such as necklaces. If you have somebody that's physically violent toward you, you want to move. If he start, if they start an argument, you want to move that argument out of the kitchen, any place there could be potentially weapons, such as knives. If uh, an abuser has a handgun or a gun in the house, you want to move the argument away from there. And if, like I said, at the end of the day, if your life is in, in danger, you need to get out. It doesn't matter what you have with you, get out of that situation. So a lot of times when you're talking, when you're going through a traumatic event because of an abuser, a lot, you're traumatized. And it's hard to keep, when you eventually get to the point where you get out of your, you extricate yourself out of that situation and you're filing a restraining order, it's hard to call up details. And so one thing that I would encourage you is to somehow document what you've been going through with dates and what happened. And that's complicated because so many people are not working. They're in home a lot and they're around their abusers a lot. So what, some ideas that, that may fit is the person that you, is your buddy, that your contact person, maybe when you go to the, and the, going to the grocery store or going to run an errand is a great time to reach out to people or, let, or call for help or let people know what's going on. Maybe you want, when you go to the grocery store, you have a friend that you call on the phone and you say, can you write this down for me? On this date, this occurred. If you have pictures of bruising or destruction of property, Send that to your friend to keep for you. You want to find a way to document different things that have been happening such that when you go to your attorney or you go to file your domestic violence protective order, you can clearly recall based on your notes throughout that. That would be very, very helpful. But at the end of the day, right now is very tough for a lot of reasons. And so, as I've said in this, uh, while I've been talking, the abuser wants to control you. And I've done this for a number of years, and I don't think if you're being abused, I, you are in charge. If you don't want to be with somebody that's abusing you, you do not have to be. If you want to leave, you can leave. And I just I want to encourage you to keep safe, to get out of that situation. And one thing that we can offer is legal aid provides very good lawyers. We handle thousands of domestic violence cases a year. You can call us, we're free attorneys. We don't charge a dime. You can contact us and we can help you. If you want help filing this, we are now offering the ability to help people file domestic violence protective orders. You can call us and we will put the place, the website that you can go to and the number. The number is 866-219. L-A-N-C, or you can go to our website and apply online, legalaidnc.org. We'll have those numbers, and it may be that you want to send this to somebody so they can, but we are here to help. Thank you.